back to Happy and Healthy. I am your host, Janine Amopola. If this is your first time listening to my podcast, this is a podcast that I post every single Tuesday, and the goal is to help you be more happy and healthy in your life, whether that's mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. I have such a heart to just help people, to love on people, to ask people questions that will hopefully in turn help you be more fruitful in your life. I am a believer. I am a Christian. I'm a Jesus follower. So a lot of the themes in this podcast do contain that. However, there are other podcasts that don't contain that. So just know you're welcome here for whatever you believe. And I love to have you here. So thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I'm really excited about today's episode because Sean and Andrew are a couple that I've known for a while for the last four years. Um, I knew them out in LA. They are an amazing, amazing godly couple. And I look up to them. And this podcast was just really real and genuine with them. I think they have amazing advice, amazing things to share with you guys. I think you guys are going to benefit from it a ton. And so I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And I did want to just say a big thank you again to the monthly donators. We have people that donate to this podcast monthly, which is just so wild to me. Sometimes I'm just like, wait, what? Like that is so crazy. So if you are a monthly supporter, thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for sowing a seed into this. This really does help me. This helps me now be able to create different products. I'm trying to invest into potentially getting a studio. So your investment really helps me me be able to produce higher quality content to be able to help afford my team and everything. And so thank you guys so, so much. If you want to donate monthly, there is a link underneath the show notes that you guys can always do that. There is no pressure. It's of course free to listen. There's no pressure, but thank you again to those that do. Uh, You guys are the best. Let's just get right into today's episode with Sean and Andrew East. All right, Sean and Andrew East, welcome to Happy and Healthy. How are you guys today? Great. How are you? I'm really good. It's been a a busy year so far, and I just decided today I'm going to be doing a, or it started yesterday, I'm doing a social media fast, which I'm actually really excited for. I've never done that before. Have you guys done that? Wow. We haven't. We should try it. Yeah, I'm currently doing a two-week thing where it's just like no consumption, no posting, no scrolling. Because you'll know it's like becomes this mindless thing and then you're just like in a spiral. It's not healthy. But you just started? uh, I started it just yesterday. Wow. How's it going so far? The first 24 hours. (laughs) Like, you know how you're just so accustomed when you're bored just to open yeah. Instagram? I keep finding myself doing that, and I'm like, oh, wait, no, I can't do that. But I will say I've had some really good just quality Jesus time, so that's actually been really helpful, and that was just, like, the whole goal and intention of doing that. So I'd say right now it's good, but probably a week in I'm, I might be struggling. <laughs> I'll report back. Suffering nice. from withdrawal. Good yeah. luck. No, it's great. I fully yeah. support that. Well, thank you guys for uh, joining. I love y'all's background. You guys have a podcast, too. Is that called? Is it called Couple Things? We do. We just got done filming an episode. Oh, but heck yeah. We talk about couples and everything that comes with it. Ooh, maybe, maybe one day if I'm a couple, I'll have to come on it or something. <laughs> Someday when you find someone out there, come on our show. <laughs> Lord willing. Okay. Well, obviously I feel like most people know who you guys are. I mean, if you don't, I'd be kind of shocked. I mean, I literally grew up watching you Sean like ever since I was little which was just so cool backstory for those that maybe don't know um I actually met Sean and Andrew when I lived out in LA where did we meet at Stagecoach is that where we met yeah yeah wow completely that was a throwback were we doing the same brand deal was it um like Estee Lauder is that what Estee Lauder yeah wow good throwback that was like what three years ago that was four Four like years ago. Ages ago. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It was a long time ago. Holy moly. Okay. Yeah. So it's been four years. We met there and y'all lived in LA before and you guys now live in Nashville. Um, so before I go into any more of y'all's story, like on your behalf, why don't you guys just tell them a little bit of like who you are, more of your story. And I'd also love to hear how you guys met. You got it. <laughs> okay. So my background, I was born and raised in Iowa. I was a gymnast my whole life. I competed in the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing. I won four Olympic medals. I tried to make a comeback and make the 2012 Olympics as well. I retired a week before and went to the Olympics just to watch and be a spectator. 
I met this cyclist, USA cyclist named Guy East. We hit it off as friends. We started talking and the whole time we were talking, he was just like, you have to meet my younger brother. You would be perfect for him. I think you guys are like match made in heaven. So we flew back to the United States and I went on a blind date with his little brother who is now my husband. Me. So. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Wait, that's so cool. So yeah. everyone just needs someone to set you up pretty much. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I got a good big brother. Wait, what's yours? Sure. Yeah. So give your perspective. Uh, well, I have a past life as a football player. So I played at Vanderbilt um, University here in Nashville. And then I got picked up by the Chiefs. And then I bounced around all over these different uh, NFL teams. I think eight mm -hmm. by the time it was said and done ended wow. in Washington. Yeah. While I was at Vandy, I heard that Sean was looking to go into school there. So mm -hmm. I offered to be her tour guide mm -hmm. and tour I gave, guide? I gave a really good tour of the mm -hmm. school. And is then, that all you were looking for is just love. a tour? It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's about how it went. I love that. Okay. That's really cool. So in like the dating process, like, was it like, did you guys just hit it off right off the bat or was it like a progression or what was that like? Wow. Progression for sure. Uh, we had one like 20 minute phone call. We did. And I don't know if Sean was into me at all. And then we met in person after that. And Sean was not definitely not into me at all. And then it took me nine months to get a second date. It was I like did. on our blind date, our first one. We had never met in person. It was, it was just, it was just strange. Cause I was like, <laughs> in my head, I am so, I plan everything in my life. And I just didn't see how it could work. I lived in California. He lived in Nashville. It was just, we were just so different at the time. I was like, I just don't know if I can even be into him because He's our lives are so different. Dork. That's what she was thinking. <laughs> you were <laughs> cute. But, but then we went on a second date and I fell head over heels. And I was like, this might be the man I'm going to marry. Oh, so I hit, we hit it hard after that. Yeah. What was it about like the second date that you were like, okay, this is it? So the second day I actually flew to Nashville and we did like a date here and I just kind of got to see who he was like with his friends and the true you, I guess, when you flew into like my world, it was a little bit different. I don't, cause I was, I was like on dancing with the stars at that time. So it wasn't even my world. It was like, it was just strange, Yeah. but flying here and just seeing him with his friends and seeing you were just the kindest person I'd ever met in my life. And I was just like, I, I would like that for the rest of my life. Oh, geez. Thanks, babe. Oh, wow. Thank you. And here you guys are. You guys are married. You have now two kids. How Jeez. crazy. How has that Getting been? Getting serious, Janine. Yeah. I mean, are you guys going to five more kids, 10 more kids? How many more are we thinking? Ooh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, none for a while. Yeah. So I think we could potentially go one more, but that's like, I can't even fathom at the moment. <laughs> I love kids. I didn't know I like babies this much, <laughs> but they're so cute and so much fun. It's like the most satisfying thing to, to see your child learn something new or like, you know, when they laugh, it's the best. Mm. But it also like last night was tough. It's just one of those nights where I was struggling because your patience runs thin and there's a lot of noise all the time. There's always new things that you have to yeah. deal with. It's fantastic. And <laughs> I would love to have more kids, but I do think having a little gap would be helpful. Yeah, it's incredible. Our babies are our life and nobody can explain it. People always try to explain it like it's the greatest life you'll ever know, but mm. you don't truly understand that until you have your kids. Yeah, And it's fun. It's definitely a hard process with like your spouse and marriage just because there's so many transitions going on. Yeah. But it's the most um, like rewarding experience we've gone through. For sure. That's awesome. Like, I, I understand, obviously, like, when I watch my sister, she calls me crying, and she's like, oh, my gosh, the kid, like, won't stop crying, and he's yeah. sleeping everywhere, and there's so many diapers, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> my gosh. But on top of that, I mean, you guys are running a business. You guys do social media. You obviously have this podcast. How do you guys balance, obviously, keeping, A, a healthy marriage, healthy relationship with your kids, and being successful at what you're doing? And, of course, like, you have a team and stuff, but... What are some like practical things or even just like values you guys have that help you guys stay healthy within this process? I feel like we do a lot of like reality checks with each other to make sure we're, we're on the right path with that. The value side of that, we made it very clear early on that our values are um, founded in like our faith and our family. So yeah. if we get to 
consumed with work, we have to kind of take a step back and be like, we're doing things for the wrong reason. Right. We're doing it for money or for success or whatever. And we have to like stop that and go back to family. Um, so we just do a lot of reality checks, but I think for the most part, if everything we're doing on a daily basis is for our family, things tend to fall into place better. Yeah. There, there's been a lot of hard conversations that we've had with each other. And I feel fortunate that we have a relationship where we can feel comfortable challenging each other and the perspective of like, Hey, you know what? I don't think that this prioritizes our family, uh, as the, as the number one. So let's not do that. And that can lead to disappointment and frustration on the other person's account, but yeah. it's super important for us to continue to have these conversations to make sure that, you know, when we look back on this five years from now, hopefully that it's something that we're proud of. And like, yeah, our kids and our marriage were better for all these hard conversations uh, than without. Dang, that's so good. And that's cool to see that you, like you, Andrew, you're just like, you lead and you lead well. And obviously she respects you and she respects your leadership. And I think that's something that is so like beautiful. Like I always talk about this with my friends of just like within marriage of like, everyone has their own roles. It's like, okay, Shauna has her roles and she excels in those. And then Andrew, you have your roles and you excel in those and you guys are not stepping on each other's toes. I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but this is just like the type of marriage I would ideally want. It's like, this is where you excel in your role. And this is where, you know, he excels and that's his role. We're not, we're not crossing in each other's lanes. Of course there is some crossover, but it seems like you're good at doing like the planning and leading. Would you say that's true? Oh, uh, <laughs> planning. No, not the planning. <laughs> okay. That's Sean's forte. But we actually, we are actually just having a, uh, some conflict over this the other day. Whereas like, you know, in, in any relationship, there's going to be a hundred different things that need to be projects going mm -hmm. on, whether it's like cleaning the house or whether yeah. it's the finances or career or the kids or the marriage, like each of these things kind of needs somebody to take the lead on. And I think that's where like the trust in a relationship can be super important where I trust Sean that like, you know, she leads with the kids of knowing what schedule, knowing what food, knowing what school is best for them. And I trust her that, you know, she is, learning what the best thing is and always, you know, asking questions and, and doing research into that, just like she trusts me with, you know, X, Y, Z projects. And so obviously there's a lot of conversations about her saying, Hey, I made the decision that this is going to be their school they go to and whatever. And like, we're always keeping each other mm -hmm. uh, updated with that, but we definitely let someone take the reins on each of like the business, the finances. Yeah. Someone is, is leading and the other person is, is still informed, but trusting that the other person well, has it. I would say too, that doesn't come naturally like overnight. I feel like for sure, especially with like driven people or mo people who are very motivated. We're both like very entrepreneurial and we want to like build businesses. It's very hard for us to both let go of the reins on certain things. So it's taken a lot of time for us to figure out how to delegate those. But I think over the years, we've kind of figured out our lanes and we're still, we're working on how to stay within them. Yeah. But yes, I would agree that I love how he leads our family in whatever, you know, category that might be. I, I feel like it's all of them, which I think is beautiful, but it's, it's something that I respect so much. Mm, Thanks, I love man. that. I love how you guys encourage each other and then you receive the compliment. Well, like, I love that. That's <laughs> such a healthy thing to see. So what is like the day to day, like when you guys, the cameras are off, the lights are off, all that is off. What does that look like? Um, chaos is the first absolute word. Absolute chaos. <laughs> Humoring a two-year-old who <laughs> likes to play with everything for two seconds and then move on and entertaining a six-month-old. Yeah. Like we literally from seven to 10 and then from four to seven, we're pretty much just in our living room, like sitting with our five-month-old sitting between our legs as he plays with the ball or chasing drew around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it, it's not that eventful, but if you'd zoom in and like, think about how awesome this phase of life is, yeah. I just get, I, I just get so pumped about it. Cause like drew right now, our, our oldest daughter is learning all these words and she's just hilarious because she uses she's them hysterical. wrong. And so it's like, we're not traveling like we used to, we're yeah. not doing all this exotic, all these ex exotic things, but life is just as it, it, life yeah. is better now yeah. than it was back when we were, you know, willy nilly able to, to fly anywhere. And it's, yeah. it's just great. I love our life. Yeah. That's awesome. I feel like also 
there's a season for everything. Like y'all got to travel. Y'all lived in LA. You did all the awesome, amazing things. And now you're in the season of living in Nashville and raising kids and all that stuff. And that's so cool to see just doing each season. Well, I think also something that I've always wondered, and I love to ask my guests this because especially with like influencers or athletes, I think you're perceived one way online, but in reality, you're like, that is not the truth or that's not really what it is. Mm -hmm. What are like some maybe like assumptions or perceptions that people typically have about you guys that you're like, yeah, we kind of want to like break that because that's not really what's going on here. I think the first one that comes to mind, but I think it's just like that toxic mentality that a lot of people have on social media, which is like the whole hashtag goals and like perfect family and yeah. that everything's easy and everything. Like, I mean, I feel like people can look at a snapshot of our family and be like, oh, I want that. I love how they have the easiest marriage and they have the the best kids and like all of these things. But life is is hard and life is like marriage is hard and we work for it. And I just don't like the I don't like the perception of perfection. It really bothers me because yeah. I don't think anybody's perfect. Our goal is not to share cute baby videos to have people like wish that they could have the marriage that we have or the family yeah. or kids that we have. It's more to like say, Hey, this is our life. And we're, we're like, we're loving every second, the highs and the lows. And we think that you can too. And so anyway, that's, I don't, there, there are a lot of people that are like, Oh, this is, this is perfect. And you know, I, I wish Sean was my wife. Cause she's perfect. <laughs> you dang near are you dang near are but you're not oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh but yeah uh, yeah i mean n- naturally when we share things like when sean and i are arguing i'm not filming that like right. <laughs> you yeah. just can't like it's not there's no yeah. world that exists that, that can be a possibility sometimes? so yeah. there's like the, it's this it's automatically a highlight tape because right. that's yeah that's how it has to be but anyway i don't yeah. know if that answered your question <laughs> no totally and thanks for sharing that i i do think of course, like in this day and age, I think there used to be a time period where everything needed to be so perfect and filtered and all the things and face tuning and everyone is so sick of that. That's like, no, no, no. Give me the stretch marks. Give me, you know, I want to mm-hmm. see everything. And of course there is some like discernment on like what to share and what not to share. Like, obviously you're not going to like literally post your fight, but I do think that it's helpful for people to know, like, especially younger people that are looking up to your marriage, looking up to your life and dreaming and being like, I want that. It's helpful to see that and also hear that. And even just for me, because I mean, it's so easy to kind of have those, what is it called? Rose colored glasses where you're like, Mm -hmm. they have everything. And I love following people that are like, Hey, actually, no, this is like really what's going on. And it's not like, I think sometimes there's like people that all they want to do is show the bad to be like, I'm relatable. I'm relatable. I'm relatable. And it's like, (laughs) okay, we get it. But also I like when it's still showing like the good as well as the bad. And I think y'all do like Mm -hmm. an incredible job at that. I appreciate that. Yeah. And and the big reason why we started our, our podcast was so that we can like have an area where we could talk about these more complex things of like, Hey, Sean and I disagreed on this and Mm -hmm. this is why, and here's how we're compromising. We're like, you just can't do that in 30 seconds. You know, it's like, but you you just can't do it. So I, yeah, that's, that's my thought. That's awesome. Uh, I love that. Yeah. So my, my next question for you guys is obviously y'all are Christians on the internet and all that stuff. Um, and you guys were in the athletic space. I mean, you guys literally did gymnastics and football and all those things. And so when you guys were in those worlds, how was that for you guys? You know, obviously probably being pulled in different directions, do this, wear this, say this, endorse this. Like, how did you guys balance that? Was it ever hard? Did you ever cave? What was that like? Interesting. I can go first. Yeah. Well, here's, here's my thing. I, you know, I was born and raised as, you know, in the conservative Christian world. And I think it was like a sophomore in college where I got kind of frustrated at the whole Christian culture, just because, you know, there's such specific lingo and Mm -hmm. ways to talk to people that are, are so like Christianese where it's like, Hey, how's your heart? It's not like, it's not like, yo, what's up? It's like, how's your heart? Yeah. And so I, I, I realized kind of around that phase of my life where I was like, no, I think our goal is to not as a Christian morph into this. Mm-hmm. ideal Christian and use that lingo and dress that certain way with the Chacos and hold the, <laughs> you know, the uh, moleskin journal around. It's to realize that 
Jesus made me Mm -hmm. with certain talents and gifts and from a certain area that I have my own dialect and way of speaking. And maybe that includes cuss words. I don't know. Like that's Mm. not probably the prescribed way of doing it, but that (laughs) might be part of your story. And so like just realizing that I, like he made me a certain way and it's not perfect. Like there's definitely flaws that I need to, to, to work on as I'm building my faith and, and growing in it. But to own up to, you know, Andrew can wear, Jordan shoes and, you know, be in a football locker room. And it's not always about like trying to force this Jesus conversation as much as it is realizing that he's the reason that we're here. And it's my goal in playing football. Like it's the whole chariots of fire concept. Like I run because I feel the glory of God. That's kind of the mindset that I have now where it's like, Hey, this I'm doing this because I feel God's presence doing it. And I got to honor that and recognize it. Mm, I love that. I love that you even talked about just the Christianese. I mean, I will say there's some things I've looked at on Instagram and I'm like, even though I'm a believer, I look and I'm like, God, that's so tacky. Like I can't, I can't do it. I, the whole, like you have to wear this and post this. And it's just like, it shouldn't be like a box. Like obviously you want to be in a light and example, but it shouldn't be this like to be a Christian, you have to do blah, 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 blah. I just, I hate that personally. I think mine was similar, except my entire experience as, a professional athlete was when I was a kid. So I think there was definitely a difference there. Um, For me, my faith was always my purpose and my sport. As a kid traveling the world, going to the Olympics and dealing with such like adult things, the only thing that kind of gave me reasoning as a kid was my faith. So if I ever had a really hard day or I had a hard competition, or if I was just walking around the Olympic village, witnessing such adult life and not in like a bad way, shape or form. It was just, I got to, I got to observe so much of humanity as a kid over the course of so many competitions, because I was around adults my whole life when I was competing, there were so many times where I would witness things that I didn't like, or I didn't agree with, or that didn't seem kind. And my, my faith kind of just steered me in um, my purposeful direction, I guess. And gave me like reason to it all. Um, But as far as like being compromised to any extent, I think for me, uh, no, just because I was learning everything the whole way. It truly, it truly guided my, my entire career, I think. Mm, Wow. That's powerful. I feel like that's just like the prime example of basically like what it means to have the Lord as your foundation and what you're doing. Cause if he's your foundation then that drives everything you do and it's super, super evident. And Sean, to kind of back up, like you basically just said, like you started this as a little girl. So kind of like a question for both of y'all is like, what is something you'd maybe tell your younger self now looking back? I said this earlier today on a podcast that we recorded, which is, I would love to just go back. I think this is maybe more of a girl thing um, in society, but I would just go back and tell myself to stop trying so hard to please everybody. I spent years of my life trying to cater my image and my brand and my personality and my clothes and how I talked to society's standards of what they thought was appropriate and what they thought was cool and popular. And I got so tired of that and I got so exhausted. And I finally met someone, this guy (laughs) who truly accepted me for who I was foundationally. Mm. And that was the most refreshing thing I've ever found in life because it proved the entire world wrong that you had to be someone else in order for the world to agree. Mm. And I would just, yeah, I would go back as a kid and just be like, stop right now. Cause you don't want to spend the next 10 years of your life becoming someone you're not only then to start over. Wow. That is crush that. Babe. That, yeah. Dang, I like, <laughs> <laughs> I can Thanks, guarantee guys. Thanks. you someone listening to this podcast needed to hear that. I mean, my, my, my main audience are girls and, I know they look up to you and they look up to me. And that's something that's the same advice I would tell my younger self too, is it's exhausting trying to be someone else It's exhausting trying Mm -hmm. to conform and to fit in when God called us to be set apart. God called us to not look like the world. It's he called us to be who he called us to be. And it is exhausting. So thank you for saying that a couple more questions here for y'all. Okay. So just really quickly, since you guys are also, you grew up in, in the athletic world, what would you say to the younger generation that are athletes and they're wanting to be like y'all they're struggling they want to be like christ but they also want to be successful in their careers as an athlete you're good at something 
Mm-hmm. And even though it might be really cool to like be good at football and be on ESPN and play professionally, that might not be what you're good at, but don't let that overshadow you, you pursuing the thing that you are good at. And, and, you know, you can, you can make a difference in the world in a million different ways. You just have to engage with that thing and grow it and build it. Something that I always, I always talk to a lot of kids. Um, something I always tell them is like, same thing that Andrew said. I think, I believe we all have a God given talent in something and it's our like duty to figure it out what it is to try everything, mm. fail at everything. And whatever that God given talent is, is most likely in something you have an undying passion for. Mm. And if you are in something, a sport, a hobby, whatever, that someone's told you you're good at and you're going to be successful at, but you don't like it, I promise you that's not it. Wow. So have fun, work hard, find something that you love. And that doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but if you truly have a passion for it, I think I think that's God-given. Dang, wait, I just, I just got to use this sound effect for that. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, yeah. thanks. The crowd is cheering. <laughs> Yo, that was such good advice. Seriously. Thank you guys. That was awesome. So one thing I also want to know is what are you guys looking forward to this year? Oh, a lot. We just went through our goals <laughs> and it's about, well, I think it's a, I think the goals are, is a four page Google doc document. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're definitely in a phase of life where things are more scheduled than routine, yeah. which I never thought that that would be the life that I'd be living, <laughs> but it's kind of fun in a sense to be as, uh, you know, as you say, in this phase. Uh, so, you know, we're taking a couple fun trips, hopefully Disney World with the kids uh, that I think will be a blast. Yes. And then also Sean and I have um, have some fun trips that we want to take just her and I. So uh, that's always really special. I'm excited for that. I love that. That sounds awesome. OK, so two more questions here. Uh, so I have a fan question. Actually, her name is Berkeley and she has a question for Sean. I'm sorry, Andrew. <laughs> she <laughs> wanted to know. Yeah, you're like, I'm used to this. <laughs> um, she wants to know, like, how did you stay friends with the same people you were competing with? Because obviously you just told me you were friends with Nastia still. She lives in Dallas. Mm-hmm. How did you stay friends with her when that was like your main competition? Oh, it was very hard. Um, we did a really good job of it our entire career until the Olympics, we had a really hard time um, trying to like figure out how to be each other's biggest competitor and best friend. We actually, this could be its own podcast. We actually went eight years without speaking after the Olympics. Okay. Um, That's some tea. And that was more, that was more outside influence. We had the entire world telling us that we shouldn't be friends because we were, you know, one and two when we had figured it out for so long, but then the world came in and kind of got in between us. But I would say um, something we did really well at when we were competing before that whole Olympic rift was we left everything on the competition floor. It was almost like a, like a sport person and then a friend person. So it's Mm -hmm. like when we were outside of the gym, we were just best friends and girls and we just talked about life. And when we are inside the gym, it was kind of like, okay, game on, I'm coming for you. So Whoa. we really just tried to separate that and kind of know our boundaries that way. But it was, it was very difficult. We've just had to learn how to be very honest with each other. Mm. That sounds great. I think that sounds healthy too, is to have some sort of separation, which is probably hard because y'all's worlds were so like intermixed, interwoven. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks for answering that. I know Berkeley will be really excited to hear that. And <laughs> honestly, I mean, I would be intrigued to hear the whole story from y'all's perspective, if you ever felt comfortable sharing that, but I just think that sounds interesting. Like, I don't think a lot of people actually know that. So thanks for sharing that. Okay. The last question of today's episode, and then I'll let you guys go is what keeps you guys happy and healthy? Gotta make sure you hydrate. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm I'm big. I'm, I'm, I'm a big Big water water guy. Yeah. He's a big water guy. Like a gallon a day type of guy or what? Uh, at least yeah i'd say at least for sure okay your bathroom um, is well utilized then sorry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go ahead sorry you go first you don't have any, you want me to go first yeah i feel like life is best lived when you take a step back and think about how you're living it so whether that's journaling for you uh you know daily prayer time some people call it meditation whatever word you're using you know, sorry, those are not the same thing, but people, you know, have quiet time. People have quiet time in different yeah. ways. Um, and I think having that time to like sit back and reflect on, Hey, this is going well, this isn't going well. I want to change this. 
you know, praying like Lord th- thinking outside of yourself mm. is extremely, uh, I think healthy. And anytime I'm super frustrated or annoyed, it's oftentimes when I'm thinking too much about myself. So it's mm. like, you know what, there's other, there's other people that I could help. And that's well, that's where I'll start to get myself out of this rut. So, yeah, wow. I would say priorities kind of like we talked about earlier. I think if we keep our priorities in the right order that keeps us happy and healthy it's whenever those kind of get out of whack that things go wrong oh those are great answers thank you guys so much thank i you, enjoyed Janine. this y'all are the best i uh, i'm hoping i can see you guys in nashville um and thank you guys for taking time i honestly like i feel like i got something out of this so thank you guys for helping <laughs> me be happy and healthy um where okay. can my listeners find you guys we are on uh, Sean. You can find her at Sean Johnson. I'm Andrew East. We have a show called Couple Things. We're known as the East Fam on YouTube. But I got to say, Janine, over the past couple of years of knowing you, it's been cool to see you grow and uh, and share your story. And I know it's mm-hmm. making a big difference. So mm-hmm. we're glad to be uh, be on the show and be a part of that. But keep doing wow. your thing. Thank you. Yeah, I've I think I've been through quite a bit since meeting y'all. So. Mm -hmm. (laughs) i'm thankful for just a couple things just a couple (laughs) but thank you i appreciate you saying that a a ton and i'm looking forward to just seeing what you know 2022 has for you guys i'm excited um hopefully get to see you guys out in nashville or if you guys are in dallas hit your girl up um and yeah girl up hit us up let's go (laughs) all right you guys thank you so much um for those listening i post these every single tuesday you can subscribe check out the happy and healthy instagram as well as my instagram which is janine amapola i'll see you guys next tuesday until then stay happy and healthy bye guys bye Bye, guys